feel like I did a million sit-ups. Look at you, dude. Yeah. Did it look like I was dying? I don't know. Yeah, it looked like I was freaking <laughs> about to meet Jesus on pit road after the race. I was so cramped up. Say that again. I can't tell you that. I feel like he's Jackson Storm. I've never done drugs, but if this this must be what it feels like. <laughs> We're not allowed to do this stuff in any other racing I've ever done. It was like good and bad on my shoulders. <laughs> you know, telling me what to do. I'm not going to be that guy that just comes in here and toots my own horn. Doot, doot. Stacking them deep, selling them cheap. That tastes like gasoline, rubber, and victory. We're just out here stacking packs. Hey guys, welcome to Stack and Penny Circuit, the America's edition. We have a ton to break down today. I'm Corley Joy, driver of the number seven Camaro, joined by the usual band characters, character, uh, Ryan Flores, front just, tire changer of Ryan Blaney's Ford Mustang. Just one character. Just one. But we got another character coming in today. Uh, yeah. He's joining us here shortly. Shane Van Gisbergen joins the show to break down his Coda exciting weekend. Uh, but we've been kicking around the idea. We're just going to get into my weekend. I had enough stuff going on. Uh, it was going really good, and then it went really bad. Uh, so where do we even begin? Well, I start with practice because I was just watching. It was Crew's birthday, so we were out and about. Happy birthday, Crew, four years Happy old, big doll. Yay. Um, and I was watching on my NASCAR app, and I saw your first round of practice. You were like two and a half seconds off, and I was like, oh, crap. Yeah. So um, then I— I was lost for a couple f- couple laps. One, uh, the first three laps on a racetrack, when your tires are good, somebody spun out in front of me every single lap. So that didn't bode well for a fast lap either. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then— And then I was just trying to piece it all together. And then I look back like— I don't know, an hour later, because you had two practices. Yep. And then you were top five in practice. And yep. I was like... I think we ended up 10. Homeboy figured it out. Yeah. Uh, and then go... Okay, so then I like kind of was trying to leave myself in suspense, so then I get home and I have practice DVR'd. I see you make it in the last round. And it made me think about Watkins Glen, and I'm like, hell, okay. Made it made it the last round. Now the goal is don't yeah. qualify 10th. Like so the, my, my dash uh, lap timer didn't work, so I just hit a what I thought was a it felt slow which is weird because normally when you feel like you're going fast and you're bouncing and all out of control you're really going slow as hell uh, but talking and working with Josh Wise working with Scott Speed they've told me that hey um, a lot of the times when you're under the tire and you're maximizing the tire you're probably going faster uh, so I crossed the line in our first round lap and it, uh, it was like suspenseful I'm like because it, it was all zeros on my dash I'm like oh no was it really bad? Like, tell, I, I, I had to know, know if it was Somebody good. Somebody say something. And I was like, was it good? Yeah, 129.90. And I was like, I, 20s are good. Like, if it's like 30s are nor, like 30s are good. I'm like, holy shit, where'd that come from? Yeah, it's a good lap. Um, so we obviously had a lot of pace in our car. Just felt really good about that. Bro, you knocked out SVG, our guest coming up, and AJ Allmendinger. Two They're guys that good. have won cup race, like a lot. And, I mean, a lot of other people, but those two are in your group, and then you go in and yeah. qualify in the top five, which I thought was, I mean, that's a that's a big step. Very, very big step. Um, so I felt really good about that, really confident, um, because the second round, I just wanted to, I, we waited a little bit. A lot of guys were smoking up, smoking tires, trying to get a little more grip, but naturally your tires aren't going to fire off and have the speed as they do the first round. Uh, so we only slowed down four tenths. I wanted to uh, put a fairway drive out there and – Couple guys missed it, and we had a great, great starting position. Boyer was talking you up pretty big, and then I was, I was, I didn't even see you on Sunday at no. all. Um, you walked by after driver had a bunch but of it was, appearances. Well, but it was like really the pit road and everything's kind of spread out there. Yeah. Um, but I was like interested. I'm like, all right, here we go. Like, see, because I, I was thinking about Connor Zilich because I was like, I was sitting there with my wife, and I'm like. They say this kid's going to stomp the field, and right when I said that, he locked his front tires up and slid off the track. And she's yeah. like, you just cursed that kid. And I'm like, oh, man, if he would have just stayed up front all day, he'd have won the race. So I'm By like, a mile. I'm like, let's just – I hope Corey can just have a drama-free day, run in the top ten all day, and finish there. Yeah, my, my goal was to settle in in the top eight to ten the first lap because once you get singled out there, that's kind of where you run, the entire run, whether you're seventh or 27th. Uh, everybody ru- runs, you know, within seven or eight tenths. And seven or eight tenths on a road course, it 
doesn't sound like much, but like it's it feels like a long way. You can run a couple seconds faster than a car and only catch it a couple car lengths. Yeah. Um, so we were feeling good about our starting position for about, I don't know, nine corners. Um, so we drop the green, get through one and two, merge into the S's fifth. I'm like, okay, here we go. And we all jam up in turn eight like we had all weekend. Uh, and then it's the race for leverage down into 11 is a big breaking zone. Uh, and the 11 rolled to my left rear quarter through eight, and he, he kept me out there. Give you a little right rear on a platter. Yeah. Here you go. Well, Brought so, you some lunch. Man, it's just a, a really tough uh, spot. So Ross Chastain did the right move. He jammed it in three wide bottom. The 11 kind of forced me up, and the grass was coming up, so I tried to merge, and I didn't know I was top of three. I thought that the 19 was there, and he was going to give me a lane. Uh, but as you see, Bubba did the same thing. He jammed at three wide bottom. Um, and maybe he thought that he was only outside of two, didn't leave a lane uh, for three of us, and unfortunately killed all of our momentum. Uh, knocked the toe out of our Gamebridge Camaro. And I, honestly, man, I was so frustrated. I usually do a fairly decent job of uh, – regulate my emotions and kind of locking back in when something yeah. like that happens but i was i was defeated uh, fail fast no yeah it's defeating I when was, you work your butt off look at all these cars going by all of them uh i think we went back to 23rd or 4th so i was so freaking defeated man um it legitimately took me all the first stage uh if not more than that to like get my mental state back to where i could like go run fast again because i was so f-ing mad do you feel like you so you said that you wanted to just settle in and i think about this with ryan too because i think ryan does this this is why we end up backwards a lot of these races i think is like you get to where on the starts you get to where you settle in and everybody else is like chomping at the bit yeah maybe. plugging it three wide and yeah. you're like whoa, whoa, whoa no, no no i thought we were gonna ride here for a second and you're back, you're yeah, backing w- up your corners like you would on a fast lap, and then like you back up your corner like worried about exit, and this guy's just worried about getting your quarter and yeah, blowing his exit. Spot. So I think like with with the twelve car, I think that sometimes we get taken advantage of on the start of road course races because then once it plays out, then we boop 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 go back forward. But it seems like if you are gonna just run the road course and run your race. Yeah, you, you have to be more up. worried about putting guys in a bad spot, using yeah. them up and getting getting forward. Yeah, that's that's one thing where, you know, I just I'm just working on my confidence to get pace at a road course and then working to change your approach to be in like a, just a strictly leverage position to put guys in bad spots to just commit to in, entering a corner completely wrong essentially. Yeah. But wrong is is subjective because the 23 entered on the very bottom and he was in the advantageous position uh i wish he'd have left a couple feet uh i tried to merge i just i wish i'd have known i was top of three i didn't know i was top of three here well everybody thinks too that you just have a spotter looking at your view like this all the time and your spotter where they're at they can't see you're kind of on that corner by yourself aren't you uh yeah you got spotters in nine um but what corner is that that's 11 um so when we get when we get turned there, knocks a toe out, right, and it just I, I lose all the track position. Then you're f- just freaking fighting, frustrated. Back to where, uh, unfortunately, it's just a freaking dog fight the rest of the day. Uh, you work to get to where we qualified, right? You work all day long to try to get yourself the track position to just to maintain to have good clean pit stops, and the race would have worked out in our favor. But unfortunately. Uh, it freaking started terrible. So okay, so then it's like okay, new mission. Now we got to now well, we're now then we're back. Two here. laps later, I get shucked by somebody else. Um, lose a bunch of spots too, and it, two laps into the race, I'm I've been lost. I've lost twenty five spots. Uh, so at that point in time, I'm like, I'm over it, dude. People keep smashing into me. Uh, like you either be sm- smashed into or you're going to be the smasher. So now the innocents start uh, getting it. Yeah, uh, just uh, dude, I saw red. I was so pissed off. This one, uh, the 19 uh, was racing me down in there, so I'm looking in my spot mirror, and the four checked up a little more than I anticipated. He was just trying to make the corner, and I felt bad about that one. Spun him out. Um, That's a short track tail as all this time. You're racing a guy in the corner on your left rear, yeah. and you 
aren't like, yeah you just yeah. the guy in front of you does nothing wrong he's just a victim of circumstance well we saw that every, everybody that got spun out there's multiple cars that got spun out either an 11 or one uh just that min speed if because it's a such a small radius corner dude you lost like five or six spots there too dude i'm telling you i i, I lost more spots than i gained all day uh it was just it was sloppy for me behind the wheel because I just was super flustered uh, and mad, and um, it just didn't go like I hoped. Right? No, you think yeah, about it. You'd come through SMT all Saturday night to try to find a little more speed in in race runs. Felt like I was prepared, and you know, a couple incidents, and you find yourself in a bad spot and uh, knock some speed out potential speed out of your car, and then. Uh, you go from hoping you have a top 10 day to just fighting for a top 30. So that was frustrating. And then um, every time I go to go, every time I leave GoPro Motorplex, Trackhouse Motorplex, I feel the same way. But at least you're getting paid to do this. I paid it to go there and get frustrated. That's true. Uh, I have I have a, a lot of fun in, in uh, Trackhouse. So that's what it seems like, though. It's like when you're on the rental carts with your friends, right? And there's always one guy that's going to take advantage of everybody and yeah. smash everyone out of the way and get out and laugh about and it. get out and win, yeah. right? And then you're like, no, no, I thought we were racing, and then you get smashed, and it's like, damn it. Yeah. But it seems like that's kind of it, and that's what these cars are like. Like you yeah. can kind of drive in there, and like, they legitimately are like rental carts. You have bumpers all the way around, and you just smash it. Watching the truck race, like Dale Quarterly, like lap one, his rocker, everything's crushed. Yeah. Everybody's like cars are just crushed. Yeah, and then you can't run anymore because you're getting flats, and you just can't can't work on it. But these cars, like, I think Josh, I think I heard Josh Berry say that he's like, it's like a rental car. You can just. Yeah. A rental go kart, not a rental car. Yeah. I don't suggest going <laughs> to get a rental car and smashing it. A rental go kart where you just kind of bounce off each other and nothing breaks. Yeah, yeah. And I've gotten more texts in the last, uh, I don't know, twelve hours from people. Did they make it out on Fox like I was dying? Did it look like I was dying? I don't know. Uh, I didn't see anything, dude. I'd get it. I'm feeling fine right here. My abs are freaking locked up, and I can't breathe because I'm trying to walk it off. I'm thinking about sitting down. And I'm like, oh, man, like I have if I've got, I don't know, 10 abs, all 10 of them are like baseballs at the moment. So I lay down and my back seizes up and Leon's like, you want me to get EMT? And I'm like, mm, I don't want to be that guy. But yes. Oh, look at this scene. Dude, you got to Oh, my goodness. Yeah, they brought you everything out there. Yeah, dude. Should have done the Kyle Bush and lay on the back. <laughs> Hold your hands. <laughs> I should have, dude. <laughs> dude, my uh, my freaking glue. And my abs were so cramped up. Uh, that's not the first time that's happened to you. If you're ever going to cramp, it is in my your, abs, your core. You I don't remember know what happened to you in Martinsville? I drove you home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that. Well, that one I was able to walk it off to where uh, people didn't know that I was crippled. Yeah, and until you got in your lounge and you couldn't move, I like yeah. walked up in your lounge I'm like Sanka, you did. I, w I felt yeah, like I yeah, was I'm dead. On. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if that's just a sodium. Uh, just like my minerals were off, but I, I felt like I was ahead of it with my uh, with my hydration. Just I looked at my suit after, and there was so much salt on it. I think partially because with those with those races that go green, uh, you have no time to drink. Maybe it was because after the first lap, you were super salty. I would, dude, I was so salty. That could be it. Um, I, those days, the over the overcast days are the ones that get me. On pit road because like it's not super hot and you kind of forget to drink water. And yeah. Then, if it's if anything's gonna cramp up me, it's my hands or my um my quad. But you, it's your core. It's my yeah. And it's that my, it sucks, it's my dude. it's my calves and uh, it's my calves and my abs. Um, and both were both were cramping up. Not not even in the car. When I got out of the you car, it was like they were like, okay, we done now. Okay, we're good. Let's just go ahead and lock up. Um. So to everybody who was concerned, thank you for your text. I'm, I got a bag of fluid. I talked to Bob Pockers, and everything was fine. How are you feeling today? I feel like I did a million sit-ups. Look at you, dude. Yeah. Yeah, not, yeah, not like, yeah. Not Legit. great. Uh, I feel fine. Like, I, I don't feel any more tired than usual. You don't feel as bad as Michael McDowell. Oh, my God. Dude, he did just come in. There's not, they're, they're almost impossible to drive. So the fact that he was able to make however many laps – with a broken rack was unbelievable. He 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 would come by and he had like the he had like the uh, you could see all the power steering fluid had blown down oh, the side dude. of it. And he's got a small wheel because you guys run a smaller wheel. No power. Oh, no oh power dude, that's not no. fun. Oh. <laughs> oh. 
other driver can do this. No, uh, I, I don't disagree with that. <sighs> oh, oh, he's talking to himself. We gotta keep going, dude. Okay, here we go. All right, back here we to go. it. A couple, couple more. Thumbs up. <laughs> Thank, here we go, guys. Uh, go back out there. He, yeah, dude. I don't wish Chad on my worst enemy. I was watching him because he was Bert. like a couple down from us, and like ten to go. He just came in and parked for a couple laps. Uh, so we, and that's when he was like, and then he just like, all right, and he just pulled off like, yeah, I'm gonna go back out here. Whenever <laughs> they, whenever everybody was having some power steering issues right in the beginning with the car, and they they didn't really know once they, before everybody started to figure out the system and make how to make it work. I lost power steering at Bristol, and I had my hands at like 12 and one, like mixed grip, like I'm deadlifting, going <laughs> at Bristol. Oh yeah. Oh no. I made it like. 12 laps. I'm like, guys, it's impossible. In, in what? In, in the cup car. In the new one? Yeah. Dude, imagine if you're doing that and then you get loose. Yeah, you wreck. R.I.P. Well, actually, you, you sometimes, hands for sometimes sure. you wish you get loose when you got no power steering because it alleviates the wheel a little bit. Like, oh, thank you. And then, huh, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know, because these things have like 12 or 14 degrees caster. So, dude, they are. And the, and the tires are wider. So it's just a freaking bear to wrestle. Uh, speaking of wrestle and cramping up calves, the guys with the biggest calves I've ever seen in my entire life just walked into the nonsense garage. Let's keep them waiting no longer. Shane Van Gisburn is going to break down his Coda experience with us right here on Stag and Penny. Stay tuned. Old Kiwi calf himself. Hey guys, we're back. Uh, joined right here in the Nonsense Garage with the driver, the number seven Xfinity ninety seven, uh, and the sixteen uh, Cup car. Frequent guest of the show. Happy to have you back in, Shane Ben Gisbergen. Yeah. Thanks for having me again. Uh, you had an exciting weekend, my friend. Yeah, it was good and bad. Um, had a lot of fun and a lot of cool battles, but unfortunately, twenty something place in both races. So that kind of sucks. Not capitalizing. Well, you finished. Much higher on Saturday, sure. Than what the <laughs> the results show. We'll get to that in a second. Not the first time you've seen the place. Said you went you went there with via supercars yeah. almost a decade ago. Yeah, twenty thirteen. We did half the track then. Say that again. What year? Twenty thirteen. Okay, I just wanted to hear you say that again. Um, I've never heard. <laughs> yeah, George, we used to do it all the time. Yeah, Coleman Presley used to. Coleman Presley one time counted to a thousand when they were gluing lug nuts, and every time he'd get thirteen, fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> and then you keep going until they got the 213. So after the S's, you bang a hard left. And then you uh, blend yeah, back in the like S's. the back stretch. Yeah. Okay. So eight, nine, the rally, the rally course that we <laughs> yeah. ended up racing on in the, 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 the dirt fields. But uh, we'll talk about track limits in a minute. Uh, what was your Xfinity series expectations? Because that is much unlike any car you've ever driven. Yeah. It was pretty crazy so i had a good chat with marcus actually before yep. i got on track and he said yeah it'll be different to everything you've ever expected the way the brakes the way the differs and it's weird like they turn left different to how they turn right and how they talk up on exit so when you turn left like the left front inside front comes way off the ground and they look awesome really grip up but when you turn right they drift so it was really bizarre trying to get used to the handling and, yeah um, but a lot of fun to race and the way they move around and how you got a down change pretty cool how much age pattern stuff have you done before that a fair bit but never really really with my right hand so i struggled <laughs> oh, a bit with that yeah i got better um uh, but yeah my arm was pretty sore sunday morning yeesh aj yeah. said that that i had heard him say earlier in the week that that car fit your style better which i which i was like man i thought we kind of designed the cup car off of the v8 supercar so that caught me off guard well, why did he think that I had a theory on that. I think because the differences in skill level of road course and car control and tire feel shows up more in Xfinity car because you get more body roll, you get more body heave, tires are narrower, much smaller of a window to hit with your downshifts. It's, Explain it's, to that a little the bit. Supercars are probably in the middle of the two. Okay. Like the cup cars are so stiff, low, and they're stuck in the high speed stuff and they don't ride the curbs very well. And they don't take them very well, but the Xfinity car feels like you can ride over anything. It's like a big riding on a cloud, the way it moves <laughs> around, and they just, just slip and slide, and you can drive them so hard. You can drive both of them hard, actually, but yeah, they're complete contrast from each other. 
So something I found interesting, we were talking before the race on Sunday, uh, that your shoe, your right yeah. shoe was the the bottom of your foot was completely almost like down to your foot. Your foot was almost hanging out of the shoe. Yeah. I just after a, one race. I didn't have a spare pair of boots for Sunday, but I didn't have the pedals probably set up right. I set them up good for, I guess, qualifying. But in the race, when the brakes got long, I was kind of on top of the pedal, how far it was to get back to be able to heel toe. So I couldn't get my foot back far enough and just killed the top of my foot. So. Mm -hmm. And then the side of my boot, these boots don't have uh, like a side on them for the heel toe like I, I had in Australia. So I need to change my style up a bit, but I, pretty there, different. D does AJ right foot break or is he left foot break? He left in both, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you so not wear those boots from there? They're not SFI? Uh, yeah, I can, but okay. not on the Alpine Stars we have now. So oh, okay. Alpine okay. Stars make some. I just need to get some. Mm. Probably a thicker sole as well. Yeah, because the just the pedals are different. The Xfinity cars yeah. are hanging, so the top of your... I could, I could the way imagine. that hook under, yeah. Yeah. And the pressure in the race that you needed, the pedal would go so long. Like, it was pretty hard to push, yeah. Man. Did you ever, do you ever go left foot break? Is there any instant, like, instant? On the ovals, I am, yeah. Okay. Like, I, I had done it before in rally cars, but never anything else. So, I can't do it on a road course when I start down changing and stuff. I'm yeah, just all that. goofy. So, I need to go back to normal. How much do you, are you using the clutch in the Xfinity car? I can't tell you that. <laughs> one to ten <laughs> no you needed a amount. fair bit like how much more how much less in the cup car uh, yeah a lot less in the cup car because okay. they don't have the wheel hop and they don't move around as much under brakes yeah like the xfinity car as soon as the wheel hops you got to get straight to it mm. Mm. yeah it was crazy how much was a wheel hopping with 21 was shoved under your ass into one? <laughs> it wasn't for the first bit but the second or third time he hit me yeah <laughs> man yeah. i was so frustrated watching that i'll be honest and I think we got a. I think we got a. We got clip a couple of clips uh, on a green white checkered. There was what two green white checkers, and you were the it control was, car. Yeah, two. So my favorite. Everybody felt the same way after you dominated the race. You did such a. It was such a good race between you, Larson, yeah. and AJ. Everybody you felt lost this. a little track position. You fought yeah. to got it, to get it back, and then uh, you were helped into turn one a little bit deeper than what you wanted to go. Yeah, we got better and better yeah. all day, and as I'm, I understood it, and yeah, first stint probably didn't drive as well, and I probably saved the brakes too much, but. It did help me at the, in the third stage. Really? I thought I was good, and then the yellows come out. I knew it was going to be crazy, and yeah, I just didn't know how I could have approached it different because I guess no matter what I did, he was still just, people were just going to run you over at one. Well, there was one before then where you kind of did well, and then you got a little wide. and I it, pushed in too hard to try not get run up the back. And then, it, but you got AJ and Ty, yeah. and then Ty was mad at AJ. But then that one, like, the, the thing to me is like, okay – if you're going to race like that, like you've dominated the whole race and it's frustrating. And then to take advantage of a guy, that's one thing. But when you get it back, don't get out of the car and be like, well, he didn't give me a chance. Like that, that with the <laughs> way that, the way that he, um, so going through 15, 16, coming to the checkered here, the 17, I think was on a tire advantage. He bit. was, yeah. He was on new tires. So he was but, on new tires coming hard. Yeah. So it's a weird mentality here. It's something I've never been used to. Like we're not allowed to do this stuff in any other racing I've ever done. So. Normally, when you, when you say this stuff, just ship somebody. Yeah, with no hit, regard, just hit someone out of the way with no <laughs> care. So. so that was your first time. Like, I'll try it. Yeah, yeah but let's like try at, it. at turn one, normally what he would have done would have been a penalty and pretty much. What's every a penalty other... look like there in the supercar? Uh, for that would be a fifteen second or a drive through. Okay. Yeah. So you know, I've done that, and then the whole next two laps, my spotters, crew chief. Get his ass, get him going, <laughs> push him off. Uh, and you're what? like, what? Yeah. what? So I had, it was like good and bad on my shoulders, <laughs> <laughs> you know, telling me what to do. So, Well, then you got Larson right there on new tires yeah, too. Push yeah. What, so like, what is your initial reaction to, to this type of racing? Like you've never, you said you've never been raced like that ever. Yeah. It's, it's weird. And then, you know, to now be thinking, oh, where could I have moved him differently, differently. to pass him in a different spot? And, you know, people were telling me, where I should hit someone out of the way. Like, I've never had to thought, think like that yeah. before. So it's crazy. He had better drive, though. Like, he could come off. He would get yeah, off the corners Yeah, he was getting off better. the corners. My strength was braking and, and turning. But, yeah, into here, he just stood on the brakes and yeah. backed it up even earlier. So I didn't mean to hit him that early in the corner. But yeah. Anyway. Well, yeah, he parked it. Yeah, Because he, he, knew, it was he knew it was coming. Yeah, I guess. So. Um, but So if you got a redo at it, what what do you do? Wait till 20? Um, or 19? Yeah, it's I, hard to say. It's so hard to say because yeah. there's so many variables. Like I made a couple of mistakes earlier in the lap in the S's, and that put me far behind. So I don't really know. What would you have done? 
Oh, I, I'm running 27th, so don't ask me. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what to do to move the win. You, you've been contended for a win every time you've been on I the race I don't know track. that there's anything you could have done because the urgency yeah. – The urgency the, the 17 was going to get there. You couldn't yeah. set him up. If you were to set him up, the 17 would have just pounded. He was too close by then. It was. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. The, maybe it was the end of the second stage when you guys were all racing each other, all pitted together. Like, it was – Top notch, like it was awesome. You were, yeah. you were like to, to watch it. One of the, one of the the moves that you did on the nineteen into the break zone and one <laughs> completely blew our American minds because we've never seen anything like it. Yeah, well, uh, I was pissed because I missed the gear up the straight. I passed him into twenty. Yeah, and then had a run. Would you miss the third four? Second or third? Okay. Yeah, and then he. That's why he pulled out so fast. So. Yeah. But then, um, yeah, this was cool. And then battling through too. I had a good battle with Larson here as well. And, it's really, really fun. Squeeze like, them down. That's a fun corner. Yeah, but when you race these guys and AJ, like, you they're can just tell. Use you up. No, and you can tell their awareness is so high. They know what's going on. It's it's really fun racing with them. Anybody um, surprise you with how good of a, a road course racer they were this weekend? That you were like, oh, okay. I- uh, not really in this series. You know, it was the guys you'd say those three guys up the front, and then in the Cup series, like everyone's pretty good. Like, yeah, I didn't realize. T- I talked to. Logano this morning he's like dude you gotta drive your ass off the whole race in these things he's like it's you're 10 out of 10 all the time all that's time, the man. that's the coolest thing and and I missed that in supercars last year those cars you drive around now 40-50% the whole race why is that just it blows the tires off it so does you're just saving tires the whole race just moping around and these things for 3 hours it's just all you got go 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 like dude. it's so tough I it's mean, really cool yeah it looked like I was freaking <laughs> about to meet jesus on pit road after the race i was so cramped up um i think it's the tire though like because the tire is so wide yeah and you can slide it lean on it and if you cook it you can kind of bring it back and go again yeah it's really cool especially like with that. the long straightaways there seem like if you cools down. roast them yeah mm. they cool down a little bit so a ton of talk about tires obviously lately and a ton of talk about road courses and packages so like what you have raced a ton of road courses, a ton of different cars what, yep. how do you feel about the racing in these cars I feel like the Xfinity stuff was awesome. You could follow close, make big passes, and the way the cars move and lean on each other, it was really cool. The cup car's a little tougher with the aero that they have, but I still saw a lot of racing. Like Coda's good with the wide entries into all the happens. You can move around, cross people back. There was still some pretty good racing, but yeah, if you stalemate with someone, you kind of just cook. But Do you it's think good. it's so much, you know, we? do you think it could potentially be we confuse aero for just cars being closer together on speed. Everyone's pretty even, yeah. Like yeah. you can see in Xfinity the way the cars make the speed. Like the Gibbs car was so different to ours, and right. Hendrick car was different again. Right. And but AJ and I were pretty similar around the whole track. Right. Whereas in Cup, everyone's pretty much the same. Everybody maximizes the brake zone. Yes. Everybody but turns the same. It's awesome for how competitive it is, but sometimes that takes away. Right. from the racing yeah, so something driver. something that added um some different opinions uh turn eight and nine even from friday saturday uh <laughs> we we have gotten i don't know where this uh this started but since the cars can take just absolutely smashing a curb with no regard we have just disregarded track limits all together <laughs> yeah. particularly on exit yeah whether we go to watkins Glen whether we go to particularly Coda because we have made the runoff so advantageous that you have to go out there to keep your minimum speed up. Yep. Where we don't even race the racetracks as they are intended to be raced. Um, we've made the curbs less harsh. We've made the runoffs more smooth. So that's where we're just going to run. Yep. What is your opinion on curbing and track limits? It's a hard one. It took me a fair bit in the simulator to get to mid corner and then just gas it up, open the wheel and drive off the track. It's yeah. again, different to everything I've ever done, but it kind of gave you options and was pretty cool. It's more the inside apexes where I found difficult to judge, you know, where they were policing three, four, five, but disregarding six, seven, eight. So it's how it was, but it was kind of difficult. When we raced at Coda through the chicane, we had the turtles so you could hit them and you know, you get pretty cool air, but it was kind of slower. Yeah. But I guess in these cup cars, in the high speed, it's probably going to beat them up too much. But 
I think that you could probably. I wish there were turtles in that one corner where you guys all had to go through the dirt. And yeah, so just turn, blow dirt, and then you guys. I, would we have to were get digging. Lower and we lower. were digging so damn deep. The turtles yeah. were about to come out of their hole. That's how freaking. But that's how. No, we, turn eight on a slow corner, you could have a turtle, and the cars would climb up on that. But the high speed, you couldn't. For sure. Yeah. So I think this was a couple incidents in a row that they got away from turtles. It was Indy in twenty one or twenty. Did you jump that? I absolutely. <laughs> Elon Musk SpaceX <laughs> launched it off one of those sausage turtles or those sausage curves. So they were like, mm, maybe we shouldn't put a 12 inch tall perpendicular yeah. to the racetrack. Probably the wrong type of corner for it. Right. That, yeah. Or they literally put a speed bump and I was going 140 miles an hour. We'll pull the video up one of these days and launch Higgy, pull the tape. So there was the Indy sausage curb debacle where the metal curb peeled up, right? Remember they had to get out and it was this yeah. long red flag. So they were like, okay, we don't like these curbs. Uh, then we went to Coda for the first time in the absolute monsoon rain, and they had the curbs in, and drivers couldn't see. They were launching them. Uh, then we go back with the with the next gen car for the first time, and everybody was complaining they had didn't have enough floors. So the reason why they took the curb uh, down on the S's was because nobody had enough parts. The carbon fiber underbody. The carbon fiber underbody. So then once we took the curbs out. They don't want to put them back in and undo all the stuff. So just a couple incidents is that you can go point to like, okay, this is how we've gotten the track to where you can just run anywhere you want to run. Uh, I don't want to put NASCAR in a position where they have to police a half an inch of a track limit. My opinion is this, and I'm curious to hear yours is we just need a bit. There's the normal curb where you can, you know, hear the tire. Okay. I'm on my left. I'm on my right. And then you just need another row of more aggressive curbs to where it's not advantageous to hit. Yeah, or you just need a bit more leeway. Like the penalty didn't really fit the crime. So you, in Australia, we have this every year at Surfers Paradise with the curbs there, and you get kind of three strikes. Or if you're okay. doing it every lap, you'll get policed. So I got done at the end of the race when with Sage Karen, we kind of come together and it pushed me wide. Yeah. And I couldn't get back in time for the three, but I tried my best braked and lost time like it was no advantage and they and made you yeah. and they gave you after the race penalty gave me a penalty but you know i couldn't really do much but anyway but the one that i couldn't understand was chase elliott got one and he had a monster moment it was an awesome save cut the corner and, and he's got to come down yeah but he lost time yeah probably scared himself <laughs> lost time the, <laughs> lost time the next lap taking it easy right right it's no advantage but he gets a 30 second penalty so that's the bit that's a bit harsh for me but I think code is unique in that respect because that's really the only place that we go and talk about track limits. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's an F1 track and there's more runoff. But so like we get, this is a conversation that it's like when you look at rules and rule books, right? There's usually a reason why dumb rules are there. Because like yep. if we don't have track limits. Yeah, you got to police them because like, otherwise people will, people will take Yeah, we're racers. Over. We'll yeah. take advantage of right. it. But yeah, I do like your take. Um, of you know three strikes or or a yeah. warning or giving it back. Um, because man, it really could affect your playoff chances in the in the for sure. in yeah. the Xfinity series for sure. Yeah, thirty seconds for no gain is a lot. So fast yeah. forward to uh to Sunday. Um, it seemed like everything that could have went wrong with that sixteen <laughs> WeatherTech Camaro did. Uh, so just give us. There was a couple laundry list of things. Dash yeah. went out. Lost first gear. A lot. Yeah. Uh, so. How did it all start? Decent starting position. Starts, what, 7th, 8th? 12th. 12th, 12th, yeah. Not the best in quality, but yeah, the start was good. And then just, again, probably a bit too conservative. The thing here, everyone just gets into it. And as soon uh, as they see we weakness, just talking tell about me that. about it. They just push you around. So oh, I probably yeah. just need to be more committed at start. And what do you think when you just powered by me like I was standing still off of 11? I just seen smoke. It was crazy. <laughs> and I just tried to follow people, but it was pretty unlucky. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, but then just it's one way to put it. Yeah, yeah. Then just issues like I noticed down the back straight the alternator was off and my brake fans kept turning off. All the switches were changing, but the one I didn't notice was my dash page had changed. Yeah. So it went to page seven, I think, which is half a mile up of standard. So I've come down pit pit lane and hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me let me back up on that. Yeah. So teams have multiple dash pages for pit road speed. 
Uh, so if you roll your first light set of lights and you're half mile slow, you flip the flip this page like yep. yours did, and then you bumped it and you said you nailed your lights. Yeah, I, I left pit lane thinking, yes, nailed that because I held green pretty much uh, the whole time. <laughs> did he get to first speed? <laughs> yeah, and then <laughs> oh no, and then uh, on the outlet they're like, yep, come down pit th- pit lane for a pass through. I'm like, what? And they said, yeah, you spared in four sections or something. <laughs> but I by you know, half a mile an hour, half a mile, yeah. So that was a shame. Um, but, but yeah, at this point of the race, you had first gear still. I had first gear, yeah. Okay. So the that put us back a bit, and then start of stage three, we were. 20 something yeah and uh we got it better i had a really good restart had some fun battles and then i started pushing forward bro you're all you were tight with the two car all day <sighs> yeah and the 50 the 50 got me on the first stop oh. i had to wait for him but um, kamui that kamui. guy hit everything but the texas no line. everybody <laughs> runs into him i don't know Ed, uh have well, you ever raced with kamui much Oof. Yeah, it's, it's close. Is it like the, that? Is it like that on your guys' pit lane in Australia or not too bad? It can be, but it's more how I thought, okay, I've cleared them. It's fine. And then the guys it's came guys. around and uh, I, yeah. that scared me. I had to go right again. So that's the thing. We don't have the guys moving around. See? Yeah, like, oh, 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 I did oh, a sit. Don't, don't hit second, Hey, Jesse yeah. right there, the guy carrying tire. His brother's like the Navy SEAL. Don't hit him. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> uh, so you, reco- you start to recover a bit. And yep. then your first when first gear when goes. and how did you realize first gear went out? I started feeling it. Um, it was like chirping a lot under brakes and ch- ch- um, shaking a lot. And yeah. then one time I went for first and it just wasn't there. Ghost gear, yeah. So mm. neutral, I was stuck in second, yeah. just a box full of neutrals. And then there's like six, seven corners we used first. Damn it! So I struggled. I so it just keep, gets tight, right? What, what does that do? Super Logs. tight, and nothing. I'd lose about ten car lengths off the corners. So mm. I was trying to gas it up early, and I just kept jumping over the curbs to try and spike the wheel spin. <laughs> but uh, yeah, too too hard once we were going. Dang it! Um, yeah. But I feel like in NASCAR, there seems to be there's ten to fifteen guys every week have that story. Like everyone's so competitive could be in for a good result and then one little thing something happens, happens. Yeah. yeah it doesn't take much it's always something happens in a race to well someone. there's 34 35 guys that are really good i yeah. was thinking about that yesterday about the cup racing and they were talking about who are the best uh, jeff had texted about who the best guys are and i was looking at him like man well, it's track dependent too because like alex yeah. bowman shows up at coda, coda you know and and then like ty gibbs and the 20 car and 24 they're always good but it's just like everybody mm. once it gets strung out and gets going like the beginning of the race like we talked about before, is a lot like GoPro Motorplex. Who's going to take advantage of who and put each other in a bad spot and spin each other out? But once it gets strung out, like everybody's racing really hard and everybody's freaking making hauling good mail. Yeah, track position is Huge. pretty king in these races and for sure qualifying. So and well, not not getting spun out on the first lap. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, um, did you get spun out on the first lap? I did. Oh you did. Oh uh, yeah. It does did you, not. You it, didn't get spun out at all though, right? No, I was good. Yeah. Spin anybody out? No, I didn't. I was behaved. Oh, that's yeah. two less than I did. But. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got a two for in one lap, did you? Oh, God. I spun somebody on 11, and then I went down the next corner still pissed off. And It was one of those, like, you don't go with the intention to spin them out, but you like, poke your nose in there, and then it's like, eh, 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 oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> like, you let up. I was like, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Harrison. So uh, it's, we talked to you last time. You'd run a couple ovals. You went to Phoenix since then. How'd you feel about that place? It was okay. It's a tough track, very slippery. And um, yeah, again, I was mid pack, just learning all day and move forward at the end. But it's just carnage. Like the restart's been four or five wide. On that the bottom, yeah. Dog leg, I guess, is just freestyle. Everyone does what they want. Yeah. It's, it's pretty crazy, but a lot of fun. Before you, before you jumped on here, we were talking about how frustrated I was and how I felt pretty defeated after that. You, you spend all Saturday, you've pumped up. Great pop qualifying position for our guys uh, and our team, and such a big uh, step for just I'm not a great road course racer. Uh, so that was like a big confidence booster, and then all the wind was out of my sails. Is there any instant where, like, when you get out of your rhythm, right? Somebody knocks into you. Like, how long or what do you do to like refocus? Uh, especially when it's early, you just got to remind yourself, especially in these races, how long it is. So yeah. you just got to get on with it. And yeah, stop being. Yeah, it can be pretty demoralizing though when I was restarting stage three and twenty fifth or something. It's how yeah. much longer is that race than a uh, hour and a half normally from our normal races? Hour and a half. Longer. So it's double, pretty much. Yeah, so you're talking about uh, V8 then a V8 supercar, then supercar. A normal supercar. So race, how long yeah. is like how long? So the Bathurst one thousand. That's kilometers, right? Yeah, it's a thousand. Yeah, so that's so, like a Coke six hundred, but two drivers. But you get two drivers. Yeah. So I think the first stage was. 100 Ks, 
60 miles or something. And that's a sprint race in supercars. And that's just the first stage. Yeah. Mm. Oh, goodness. Yeah. That one felt short because it was only like That was a short, laps. yeah. And that race was 45 minutes shorter than the one last year when everybody was knocking the crap yeah. out of each other. Yeah. I don't know, man. Have you, uh, so you're settling into the Xfinity series. It's, it's have, been good. You've been a content, like a legit contender there. Yeah, at the end of races, but yeah. just, I don't know if I'm too conservative at the start or learning, which is good. I take my time, but you give up so much. So when yeah. I finished Phoenix, I would have loved to start it again in stage one. You'd be so much quicker. Like yeah. just learning so much through the races, but do you find, my time do you find it. yourself racing around regular guys and learning from them yeah yeah have, who, who are a couple guys that you've seen like oh have, have taught you a couple things on the ovals or aj um austin on the super speedways was good to follow when he would be back with me and i'd try and follow him through but he says his, the same thing about you yeah he courses. loved following yeah. you this week too <laughs> i guess <laughs> but yeah just placement and confidence and awareness like i'm still not 100 percent confidence where the right front right rear is of my car yeah. just from sitting on the other side so mm. I've t hit the wall a couple of times and gone, oop. Yeah, what's that know, there? <laughs> that scared me. So just getting fully confident with that. But you got any more birds lately? Anybody else flipping you off? You got any more natural rivals on the track? No, no, pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Nothing on the weekend. Have oh. you ha okay, so we've talked racing. Let's get into the American. Let's get into the American <laughs> life here. I was legitimately before you showed up, I was trying to door dash some hush puppies. Just to, so you <laughs> could try some hush I puppies. I still never had one. Or seen <laughs> one. We'll get you we'll get you next week. Has uh, there been anything else that has caught you off guard, food-wise, or just in the American culture itself? No, nah, not really. I did the motorhome thing on the weekend. Yeah, that was how good. was that? That's so different to any anything yeah, you, we do in Australia. So staying at the track, so good. Go to the motorhome, chill out between sessions. And yeah. Had the dog there. Jess was there. It was pretty cool. You're turning into a regular old cup guy, man. I don't know. Good yeah. It's cool. Big house it's on pretty, the lake coming up soon. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I heard he's buying Cal Mountain Junior's house right next to uh, right next to Harvick. But yeah, like the way it's the convenient, race, dude. It's convenient. Everything here in America is about convenience, making things easy for sure. Yeah, but it's um, yeah, it's a cool way to go racing. What are some like some unnecessary conveniences? Do you think? Uh, drive throughs drive throughs there for everything. Coffee, food, <laughs> <laughs> bank, everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but. You know, it's good the way we go racing. Just turn up half an hour before the flight, jump on, away you go, leave the track straight to the plane. Like it's, it's pretty efficient. Yeah. It's very it's efficient, but it has to be when you do it every week. Yeah, that's right. It gets boring. Like, man, for Roga, it's got to get a little bit boring, though, for like, it, you know, there's a lot of downtime on the weekends, too. But it's it's nice when you go to places like Austin. Yeah. To go. Like, normally, every morning, we'd have so much promotional stuff in Australia. And Donald, my PR guy, is on Sundays. Like, yeah, I'll come pick you up. 11 30 or something have a nice <laughs> breakfast what do i do on morning <laughs> so it's pretty cool cool did to uh out. did you get to do a track walk with the dog yeah we did a track walk he was knackered it's a long way for him it was hot, he was man. what knackered tired. does that mean tired, tired? Yeah. oh i was freaking knackered after the cup <laughs> <laughs> Holy yeah we did the walk and we got out of i think 16 up under the bridge before the carousel yeah and he walked ahead of us and just fell down in the shade he was done <laughs> <laughs> come on man two yeah, kilometers hey, to go 3.4 miles man <laughs> He gets it. Oh, Do you have, you gotta victory? buy a seat for that big we fella. We had to buy a seat for him, yeah. So. Is that victory year? Yeah. Nice. So at first yeah. he was backwards. He had his front legs on the seat and his bum on the ground. He, <laughs> could, he couldn't figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> how do you like that whole situation, the flying deal? It's pretty cool, just it's how nice. how easy it is. Just the it, hardest thing is when you get off the plane finding your rental car. Yeah. Everyone gets the keys. Beep, and beep, beep, beep. Yeah, oh, everybody's hitting the on. same alarm. Yeah. <laughs> the weird part is like is when I don't know what other teams you guys fly with or if you get a whole plane, but like when you rough up somebody, you're getting at somebody, then you got to sit by them on the plane. That's always kind of weird. It, yeah. It'll yeah. happen. Well, um, he <laughs> said he's doing the, uh, you're doing your comp meeting with Austin, right? So how yeah, do you anticipate later on that? Yeah. Later on today, we're doing the, we're doing the sim, post sim. So. How do you anticipate that going? Just, well, I don't have a problem, but yeah. yeah, I'm sure he might, but I'll just go up to him, shake his hand, see what happens. Yeah. Keep on keeping on, man. Yeah. We've got to race him again next week. What's yeah. your next cup race is Talladega? That's right, yeah. You couldn't Ooh. be going to a, a different track going from Circuit of the Americas to yeah. Talladega. Yeah, and then Coke 600. So I've got oh. some tough ones coming up. Oh, you're doing the Coke 600 in Charlotte's the Charlotte's fun, yep. man. Yep. Charlotte is So fun. have you been to Talladega? I haven't, no. Oh, man. Yep. Only thing you know about it's from Ricky Bobby. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. cool. And I think I saw someone doing parody interviews <laughs> last year through the stands and through the 
Pac oh, so you, that's looks the cup loose. race you're running at Talladega? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Because what's your next Xfinity race? This week, uh, Richmond. Richmond? Yeah. Yep. Richmond's cool. That's cool. a driver's track. That Talk about slippery. That is very slippery. Yeah, we have done that on the sim and the difference between oh, a quality to race. Bro, it's <laughs> it a looks big, crazy. A big difference. Uh, before we move on too much, we got a couple more questions. But first, uh, I know you and Austin Hill had a little bit of beef, but we also had a little bit of beef in the cup race. One, your opinion of that Kyle Busch, Christopher Bell, little to talk about. I haven't seen that Kyle for a while. Last time I saw Kyle Busch walk like that, he ended up getting his head bounced off a hood pin. Ooh, with Joey. Chris doesn't back down, though, does he? I don't think he had anywhere to go. His back was up against the car. True. <laughs> oh, he gave him that. <laughs> well, was it like a, was that like going to be like a handshake or like a, uh, what is that? Or sorry. Sorry. So. No, he, he does it like, eh. yeah, you, you're low. You're right. What I heard Kyle Busch say here is, have I ever wrecked you? And he said, no. Like, what Chris Bell looks like to me there is somebody that knew he had it coming. He's like, I know I, I got to take this ass chewing, which yeah. I can respect that. I can respect it. He also spun out the five car, which was tough. Uh, both similar incidents, right? The Chris Bell's point of view was the, the eight left the entry really open, was trying to do the kind of undercut and get a straight run down the hill. And the 20 came from like, I don't know, seven back and filled the hole. Um, I You could look at it from the outside and be like, hmm, that was kind <laughs> of uh, the the – you know 50 50 then you watch the in-car camera the 20 it's like oh Ooh. boy <laughs> um yeah couple i mean there was what probably 15 spins like that um in this the hard braking session because the minimum speed is so small there um yeah it's and, so inviting there too with the wide yeah. entries but and you just jam it in there and it's like, oh man corners are going the other way <laughs> Um, well, and when you're on on the contrary, when you're the when you're the guy on the outside, you're like, okay, I'll take this, and then get yeah. a straighter run. And, and you then don't next thing expect, you know, you, got you don't expect because he's so far behind on right. entry, yeah. Or you can't even hardly see him because he's like four car lengths to your left. Um, so yeah, there was some juice there. I wonder if that's ever gonna. Uh, he said, I think he ended it with, "You got one coming." Mm. Have you ever had what's your what's your most amount of beef you ever had at the racetrack? Uh. I had a good takeout with a guy, David Reynolds, once, where we come together and he come in the truck, abused me. And Supercar race? Yeah, yeah. He told me you? I did. No, no, he just yelled and had a go. Oh, verbally abused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's different. Than yeah, we don't punch physical. in Australia. Yo, Not like that. Dude, Marcus, <laughs> Marcus Ambrose has the cleanest Is punch. That a rich, that's oh, a Richmond. It was oh, clean, dude. dude. I saw it again this weekend. Casey Mears was like, grabbed him by the fire suit. He had like a, the Sparkos where it had like the, the cuff. And Casey Mears like grabbed him and spun him around and Marcus was like, Dude, Boom, and it was them. clean. Dude. Cracked them, and it, even everybody was like, kind of like, even Case Mears was like, "What just happened?" They didn't even know. So, I don't know. You're a bigger guy, though. Like, I don't think anybody's coming after you. But yeah, but I don't want to fight anyone. You don't no, wanna, don't nobody wants doing to, that. Nobody but. wants to fight, but sometimes you know, you gotta take care of business. What about sprint car racing? Have you ever? No, I didn't do it long enough. No, I only did it for it's them guys. One season. Get rowdy. Yeah. What fighting? Just the dirt track guys. They yeah. they seem not really like, in New Zealand either. Though. Do they not? Yeah. I think that's just an American thing. Yeah, it's another yeah. cultural thing, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like that's all we got. I know you got a lot of stuff going on, SVG. Appreciate your time again. Uh, thanks for checking in, Dakota. Thanks. You're for always me. a welcome guest on the show. Any parting words for the Sag and Pennies fans? No, not really. We're getting into any kinda, tips for Richmond. Yeah, we're getting into mm. some meat and potatoes of the season. With uh, you guys, go to Martinsville for the first the, next week. Yeah, that looks crazy too. It's pretty crazy. I think yeah. you're gonna. A lot of road course guys seem to do really well there, right? You're having a hairpin breaking moment. Yeah, true. Twice a lap. Um, do you shift AJ, there? In not, in, not an Xfinity car. Oh, but a cup car? Oh, you'll shift every lap twice. Yeah. Huh. It's da, 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 da. <laughs> and you're like, why, why are we doing this? Um, it's a lot of shifting. I think you're going to sell there. Richmond's a fickle b buddy. Um I'll tell you somebody that helped me out a lot with Richmond is Harvick. So pick his brain a little bit. Yep. Um, he is, he can just like Phoenix can drive a wheelbarrow around Richmond and, and be in contention. So it's just hard, dude. It's so freaking worn out. Can't even stress it. to you how much it's worn out. Yeah, just try to keep it on the left rear. Tired egg looks crazy. Yeah. Mm. Just try to keep it on the left rear and especially off two wrap a little longer and launch. Um, but very slippery and we wish cool. you luck. Thank you. You can do it. Should You'll settle fun. in. Yeah. Keep on cracking off them top tens. Be a playoff contender in the Xfinity Series. Excited to race with you at Talladega. 
Thanks for joining Stacking Pennies. Looking forward to it. Cheers. All right, guys, we are back. We sent SVG on his way to get some work done, and we are here with some pit road boats and woes. Plenty of woes this week, but first off, how was your day? We had a good day. It was weird um, because we got, like, dude, the flight to Austin was long. I bet you mine was longer. Well, we had, I don't know, we were an hour, we were late for the garage. We stopped twice. We only stopped once. You had to stop twice. Yeah. But on the contrary, there must have been a headwind because we got home fast last night. But like I say that because we got there. Yeah, your till, bird passed us. Yeah, we were hauling the mail. But I tech, I called you like we're taking off. We were still sitting on the runway, and I called you when I landed. You're like, yeah, we're just landing. Yeah. I'm like, oh, we hauled ass by you. Mm-hmm. But um, I say that because we got to Austin yesterday, and like we that big trip there, and I literally went like I was within a football field the whole time I was there from the truck to from the from the we park right behind the trucks with our rental car. To where we eat at Cat's Kitchen, mm-hmm. to the truck, to our pit box. And back. It was maybe like 100 feet between everything. <laughs> so I went all the way to Austin, worked in like a 100 square, 100 foot square radius, and then flew back home. Oh, yeah. I mean, people always are like, oh, man, what's it like traveling all around, seeing all the places? I mean, uh, cool, man. Cat's Kitchen in the bathroom. And, and we, landed, we landed at the FBO, and they had this like cold brew coffee on keg. Ooh. Dude, it had me dizzy. It was so good. Really? I was like, I don't know. I've never done drugs, but if this this must be what it feels like. <laughs> like it's supposed to be a little taste of it. I feel terrible. I was like, I felt good, but terrible all at the same time. I was like spinning. They got it. Like I was just pounding water. Like get this coffee out of my system. It's too high octane. But we did go P one on the day. Really? Yeah. So we we worked real hard this past week. Uh, we knew that we had some speed to pick up. We had some hard conversations in the film room and as a team, and and got better this week and went to the track. Love and, to see it. Yeah, I mean. Um, Coda's a, a tough place because it's not really a level playing field for everybody because everybody's car is not uh, super pit friendly. We call it pitable. The tires get hung up in the fenders or you see a lot of guys waiting on fuel. So it's not really like apples to apples for everybody. Like we're going to see this coming weekend in Richmond Yeah. when we go there and it's just like a flat out pit competition. Mm-hmm. But we had our fastest stop of the year. We were P1 on the day with a 947, but I got a lot of questions this week. You gonna make yourself dogs in the week? Are you guys the dogs week? We are not. No, you can't. You I can't. am very. We have to do something very special for the for to make for us to make ourselves the dogs of the week. For me to make my team dogs of the week. Um, so it's it's. You set a higher level for yourself. Higher I, stand. I'm not gonna be that guy that just comes in here and toots my own horn. Dude, dude. There's enough people like that. That's not me. All right, who man? Uh, so who are the dogs then? Just two hundreds off of us, so we were nine four seven on average. The twenty four team nine four nine. The seven team Victory honorable dogs. mention nine five two. Yeah. So they were third. So three teams within a tenth of a second on average. Uh, the reason the twenty four gets the dogs of the week, it, it's it is hard to do that when you are there to win a race, and and you know they were a half second or, or more better than on average, better than the guys that they were racing, mm. and they won by just over a second. So it's what propelled them t- to the victory, and, and they them guys. Being do you, dogs. Do you know that roster off the top of your head? I know Jeff Cordero. Yeah, dog. Ryan Patton. Yep. Landon Walker. He's about maybe All the dog. most handsome son of a gun on pit road. <laughs> they got um, some good looking fellas on that I squad. forget the Jack man's name. I'd have to look it up. Um, Is it big country? No, it's not big country. There's enough big countries in the world. <laughs> There's probably four or five on pit road. I was just figuring my odds were good. Spencer Bishop is the Jack man. Okay, dog. Yeah, and uh, the rear changer is Orlane Osaski. Os- okay. You had to ask me their names. Now I'm going to look like. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you should. You're not <laughs> man because you called them dogs of the week. They were. Yeah, no, but they they uh, they crushed. Do it. you think we see, need to see some new uh, quick times this week going in Richmond? I think Richmond people are going to people are going to be there to. Hammer Let it hang out. Hammer down. It's gonna be a. It's it's gonna be. Hey, I'm hoping it's something like Bristol, where it's like a pit competition. I don't think it will be. Um, last year we saw green flag pit stops here, but Richmond is a place where track position is gonna be king, and you can you can make a big difference in your day. Like the 24 made a big difference in the day here, at Coda. Um, they were flawless in that first pit stall. Projected them the win. A couple guys who had a couple woes. Well, I keep. We've been sitting here talking for 20 minutes off camera. 
everybody said, oh, man, I feel like this car lost race on pit road. Oh, I thought like this this guy lost a pit race on pit road. How many guys lost a race on pit road? Well, I was listening to um, just a couple of different things. I heard the one car had a tough last pit stop, which when you don't have any cautions, right, it's just time, time, time over distance, mm -hmm. right? So any, like, coming to pit road, like the 48, right, he said what cost him is he pitted and then got in traffic. Yeah. Which you're not making any time if you pit and then get in traffic. Where yep. if you and, and we have software, the teams have software that tell you when yep. to pit. Right. Optimal time to pit. They kind of take what it. They guess on it's what it's going to take. Yeah. Pit row. There's an algorithm. It's called pit row. Yeah. R H O. Oh. Um. And it's essentially artificial intelligence, and it's it all constantly uh, looking at other people's strategy, fuel mileage, and calculating the gap of where if you pit now this is the gap you're going to fill that's why crew chiefs get so frustrated when they see a guy like me out there just sucking <laughs> they're like we had it figured up to where you're going to do a nine five we didn't know you're going to do a 12 thanks yeah. they blew my whole strategy um but that's Art why it takes artificial a, intelligence i don't know that well that take, tells you your that's tells you your whole strategy they, if they knew how bad i was going to suck i probably wouldn't have a job um but not this week p1 love that toot toot Tooting my own horn. <laughs> uh, on to the 20 cars day. This is their first pit stop. I think a lot of people talked about now. Fueling. Comes in. Hit an okay plug. 20 car went a little long. An okay plug. But this is where I start to question. So, by the way, I timed it. He's plugged in for, for like eight seven seconds. and a half seconds, right? How long does it take a fuel can to flow? So stop it here. It takes two, you would say about two seconds per gallon. It's 12 gallons in the can. Yep. So it should be about... You Six. need five seconds. You probably need yep. 10 gallons if it's a 19, 20 gallon stop because they, they two stopped it. So I don't understand why he let Hicks go underneath him. Uh, um, I don't and, know what they got going on there, but he let Hicks go underneath him. So then when he makes his exchange, he's going to plug the car back in while the car's already up on the jack. Yeah. So you see he's up on his tippy toes. So when there's the fuel is spilling out from under there. So what that is, it's a sh we've switched from the old redheads. Now everybody runs these Schultz heads. We've had them for a couple of years. When if you go back and you watch like videos of Dale Earnhardt and them where there's just fuel spilling everywhere, yeah. that was not a closed system. Yeah, yeah you had a catch still can. Was going in. You had a catch can man, but you needed air on both ends. Yeah. For it to like, if it was blowing out the other end, it was still going in. If it's blowing out here or there's fuel in that tube right there, that means that you broke the seal of that closed system. Mm. So now it's taking twice as long to fill up because mm. it's just it, it's messed up the vacuum and how everything works in there so a little slow stop for the 20 fellas yeah, he just had a bad angle and i'm i'm, I'm confused about that how, how that all worked but um but it did hurt them it didn't take them out of the race and they're you know it's it's in the middle of the second stage so it uh they get the re-rack come back and, and go back at it. another gibbs team which just goes this this next clip just goes to show you the importance of your full team see how the hose just took a bad bounce kind of wraps around mark quill heel Mark Quill here, and then it goes under the right rear tire, and Jack drops. Jack drops, and they they have that open oh mic. Boy, yeah, they have that open mic. So the carrier and the Jack man are talking to each other here, like, "Hey, hey Jack, it up. We're, the hose is stuck. Or Mark Quill already left. Oh, no. They're they're talking about it, um, which he wouldn't have been able to change the tire there with the the hose all wrapped up in the gas man's yeah. uh, feet. So. It just goes to show what's like the, what's the move there? If you if you had enough slack, do you still change the lefts and then you just do a burnout over the hose? Uh, there's a chance that if the you know the the tire is pinching off the air hose, so there's no air yeah. that's going to get to the gun essentially. So the move is what they did. They jacked it up and fixed it. I, I saw this a bunch last weekend and this weekend. I saw I was watching film on our on our Penske film app, um, and, and the same thing last week. The hose throw. So here it, it all starts with the guy behind the wall throwing the hose. It's a thankless job, but he throws it and it gets that loop went around his head mm. and kind of in front of him, in front of the hub. And I saw the 42 team throw the hose this week and trip the 21 rear tire changer, Stephen Tao, just when he was going there, he fell down and he was really late, made it a pretty rough stop. And then last week at Bristol, which is a really tight pit row as well, um, I saw the 99 team throw the hose around the rear changer of the 22. Jake Seven Air is like neck, and he did the whole pit stop with the front changer of the 99's hose really? wrapped around himself. Yeah, because like, throwing, dude, throwing the hose now, 
Like I used to carry my own hose when we did five lug nuts, but now you clip it to your side because we're changing left-handed and it, the, the guy pulling your hose and um, taking care of your hose is so important. My, my guy, shout Who out. Who pulls your hose? Shout out, Brett McCutcheon's best best hose puller in the game. Mm. Um, <laughs> you're getting weird on me. No, you're getting weird on wrist. me. Uh, he even had stitches in his finger this week. Wow. And had Powered through. Thugged it. Thugged it. Absolute Just hose pull. pulling dog. <laughs> So that was it. I'm excited. That was fun. Um, it's a little bit challenging there with the, the camber being different on both sides. But uh, we had a great day with 12, so I'll take that, move on to Richmond, and we're excited to go battle under the lights. So mm. in Richmond, hey, Easter Sunday. So Easter Sunday, I'm excited about that. So we're going to Penny Staggers of the week. There's a lot of pennies. There's a lot of seven merch out there. This weekend. Um, I would say the one that stood out the most to me was the valet at the hotel. That sucker, I don't know his name, uh, but he was super into it. NASCAR fan was watching. Like, he knew that I qualified fifth when I got back, was watching Let's it on go. his phone. Um, so shout out to the valet at the Hyatt place. He's the penny stagger of the week. And we're back for some hashtag penny for your thoughts, questions. You guys keep firing them over on Twitter and Instagram and all the places and YouTube. Uh, we even check them out there in the comment section as well. Uh, but, but but first, before we get to those penny for your thoughts questions, we're going to and ask our own question and we're going to ask your opinion. Is William Byron the best driver in the next gen era? It's hard to argue against. He's yeah. definitely one of the most complete Right here, looking at the stats, 12 career wins, 10th in an X-Gen car, and he's won at 10 different tracks. It seems like this 24 team, if it's a super speedway, style track, a short track, a mile and a half, or a road course, they're just so strong, you know, dude. I feel like he's Jackson Storm coming in, all the old heads. He doesn't really know very much about the the old car, doesn't really have old habits, and he comes in with like the very uh, – the very much so the uh, simulator forward me methodology, uh, preparation, uh, unlike kind of the old school short tracks, rednecks. He comes in with like a really polished, buttoned up way of how he understands to be on the tire. Uh, and to your point, he can win on every different track, super speedways all the way down to short tracks and everything in between. It's cool to see that 24 doing good too. The old Jeff Gordon 24. I know. Everything feels right when 24 is in victory lane. Uh, hats off to Rudy and Willie. Yeah, I think that was a big deal, William going to get Rudy, you know, and saying, hey, me and this guy work well together. He, he seems like he's a um, – I'll tell you, man, that crew chief driver <laughs> relationship is like a marriage. It well, really William is. seems like a good leader in himself, too, to be able to say, you know, hey, this is who I want. This is how we're going to run the team. And, and um, he – they just – man. It's just hard. Like to run, I can't tell you enough how hard it is to run that well every single week, no matter where we are. There's guys think, that have strengths here, there, but there's not many guys that can win every week, and he's proven he can do it. I think that people that sit on the couch and watch it on Sundays and just don't do hard things for a living, they don't know how hard it is to be in the Cup Series to run 15. It's hard to, to just 10. be there. It's hard to be there. But it's to win to the most there. races and do all that, like. I can't tell you how impressive that is and how freaking hard it is Yeah, to execute at that high level week in and week out, no matter what track we go to. Uh, it's – I don't know of anything harder. Granted, I'm biased because that's what I do for a living. Correct. But it's, it's – cup racing is so freaking hard, and the, that's why the guys that are uh, consistently winning races is all that much more impressive. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say yes. William Byron is the best driver in the NASCAR next gen era. The numbers would agree. Um, but we've got, speaking of numbers, we got a lot of number fans that sent us over some hashtag mm. penny for your thoughts on Instagram this week. So let's roll through them. We'll go quick. Spitfire. Better track, Coda or Road America? Coda by far. I'm with you. Favorite From infrastructure to the racetrack. Coda. Uh, next one. What's your favorite track to race at? They say that they're a big fan and will be there for your first win. Um, any of them when your car's driving good, 
Uh, I've been at some of my favorites, Martinsville, Bristol's, um, Kansas has been pretty fun you with a good pick, driving you car. You got to pick one, man. What's your Bristol. favorite track? Bristol. Bristol. Love it. Does your qualifying and race lap times get you excited for the road courses the rest of the season? It does. Um, just I've been working so hard to try to get pace on road courses, and I just need to understand and get some confidence uh, with my racecraft. Uh, but, yes, qualifying in the top ten at Watkins Glen last year and the top five here at Coda uh, gives me some confidence that I can do it and that it's in there. I just need to channel it and execute uh, and just settle in and take a uh, top 10 day when we have the car. This one is thoughts on track limits. We touched on that with uh, SVG. So we'll go to the next one. Did Ty cost Seabell and his team a win? I don't know. Uh, I'll touch on that. I don't think so. Um, I think there was people that thought that uh, Ty should have just let Chris Bell go. They were racing hard. They were two seconds back from the 24. Chris Bell was coming. Um, you got this is an F1, right? You got to keep running. You got to race hard. I would say uh, what you want from a teammate there is not to let you go, but not to hold you up at the same time. Like if you're racing hard, you know they're coming. Don't, don't you know, arrow block or put put your teammate in a bad spot. Like, if, but yeah. also don't pull over and let them go. So, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I'd like to hear what they thought about it in their meeting today, but I'm not going to that meeting. So. I didn't see anything wrong with it. Next one. Thoughts on running the Le Mans spec car or close to it at a road course. What's your thoughts on that? Like if I want to do it? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, how do you rate SVG's performance this weekend? I think it's probably, I wish I'd even asked him that question when he was here. Uh, I feel like it was probably a little bit underneath what his expectations were. I think he obviously knows what winning in the Cup Series tastes like. He wants, feels, and feels like his abilities. Um, can contend for wins in the Cup Series. So having those issues, I'm sure he was a bit uh, a bit aggravated. Um, and I'm going to say his efforts and the things he can control, I think he did A-. minus. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, last two. Would no stage breaks have helped or hurt um, exhausted drivers? Uh. I don't know. Um, I mean, a, a race straight through that long with not being able to drink uh, anything, it would have it would have had a lot of guys gassed, hmm. knackered, thirsty, just thirsty. <laughs> what is your go to activity to relax and unwind? I love mountain biking. Um, so, yeah, I get, get in the woods, hammer down, just myself. Uh, so I haven't done that in a long time. I probably need to, or just hang out with my kids in the backyard, playing basketball or riding bikes. Um, so yeah, hang out with my kids over mountain biking is what I like to do to blow off some steam. And I got some steam this week. Um, so I need to bl blow it off because I had something to really ground my gears this weekend. Ooh, what's that? Uh, well, the fact that uh, Marco Andretti's gears were really grinding the asphalt because he lost his entire rear end housing was unbelievable. Never seen anything like it. I've seen. I, I've, I've seen broken truck the, arms. No, I saw the rear end get ripped out of a car when Michael McDowell wrecked at Watkins Glen. I was changing tires on that car. Yes, I've never seen it fall out from wheel hopping. So, who, like, who knows how many miles those truck arms had on it before the race starts? Right, I'm sure they weren't brand new. Put them in there, but uh, that was that's impressive. I've uh, never seen that. So Carissa was like, "How does that happen?" And just watching it from, I didn't, I didn't see the rear end rolling yet, and I was like. I don't know, maybe like U bolts kind of stretched or broke and it spit the shims out and then it yeah. broke some U bolts. Like, that's what I thought. Um, but the U bolts were still they're bolted still on. They're still bolted on. Everything's bolted on. There's <laughs> oh one shock. That had to be so loud coming out of there. Yes. And uh, heavy. Violent. Head. Dude, nobody, dude, that. All sorts it of looks. Action. It looks like it's not really anything there. Do you understand how heavy just the, just the third member, just the red part? Or the gear is yeah it's like 60 pounds yes and then a tire two tire yeah that's i don't know i'm not great at math 500 pounds it's close better part of it um so that coming out of there marco andretti man coming from indy cars to he, he had a problem at uh the arca race with some shock mounts now his rear end gets ripped out not having a great start to his nascar career i hope they can that get really ground my gears though it didn't grind his gears, just ripped them right out. It just ripped his gears right out. <laughs> See ya. Bye. <laughs> we'll ground your gears this week. 
Uh, nothing. I'm good. I had a good week. I am. Uh, I'm. I'm good to go. No ground gears. Nope. Lubricated. Well lubed. Love that. Yeah. I uh, hope you guys are too. Uh, and thank you. Hope you guys enjoy the show. Whether you're listening to it on Sirius XM Channel 90 on YouTube, we encourage everybody. If you listen to us generally on audio, uh, they do a great job with the YouTube. Go check that out. You can see all the video clips that we're talking about on the show. You can see all of our backdrops. We got our Rowdy Burns fire suits. We got our Tim Tebow's, and we even got a new sign, Richard Petty uh, pitcher, uh, courtesy of Jonathan Merriman. Shout out to him. Uh, got a lot of good things going on. Send over your questions. Like, download, share, rate, view, do, review all the things. We're headed to Richmond this weekend. Uh, buckle up. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for stacking pennies. Have a great week. Goodbye. Goodbye.